Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how for loop works in Robo framework. So let's start quickly. Here, you'll just create a simple file. For demo dot robo and you'll write your first test case here. for test and then give a tab uh, you can just type capital for and your visual studio code will suggest you these options so you let's use uh, for in range which is a simple example okay so in range uh, you can specify the start index generally it's zero you would start the iteration from zero and you would like to end it for put some condition over here so i'll say 10 okay so i'll end this loop before 10 not including 10 so it will go up to 9 0 to 9 and then here you can specify the steps how do you want to increment the counter by one number or two number or three number so i would say one so every time the counter will be incremented by one okay now let's first execute this program we will see the log and then we'll come back here to understand what is happening let's run this program you can see the your test case is passed and uh, you just you can see the new log files are generated over here and let's open this file in explorer and double click on it it will open it in browser here you can see the log is started from zero every time it incremented by one so zero to one one to two the incremention is by one count and it went up to 9 it didn't go for 10 it stopped before 10 please note this okay now let's see what hap what is happening in the code uh, in range function it will start with 0 so counter will be initiated to 0 first and then it will check the condition if 0 is less than 10 yes condition is true then it will come here and it will execute whatever you have written in the for loop so in our case it will print uh, log 0 let's go to the log and here you can see the log is printed now it will go to this place where it's saying uh, the count the counter should be incremented by 1 so 0 becomes 0 plus 1 1 uh, now 1 it will check the condition if 1 is less than 10 true condition is true then it will come inside the for loop and it will execute all the for loop body so it will print log 1 you can see here it has printed log 1 similarly it will go till 9 okay it will print 9 and every time it is incrementing by 1 because you have specified 1 over here and for the 9th iteration after the uh, uh, the log is printed for 9 it will go here and it will say increment counter by 1 so counter is 9 it becomes 10 and it will check the condition if 10 is less than 10 no 10 is not less than 10 so condi condition is false and then it will come out of the for loop all right now let's see how we can play with this start value if we specify 2 here let's see what happens i've saved this file and i'll run this program uh, before i refresh this page i would say pause this video think about it and then go ahead i'll refresh this page and you can see the counter is started from one now one two instead of zero so two becomes three and three becomes four so it is running from two to nine earlier it was from zero to nine okay so that's how this start value works uh, 
let's talk about this condition now if you make it 9 instead of printing it till 9 it will just print till this line not this line let's refresh let's execute it and refresh this page you can see it has went till 8 only so this is how this condition works now let's talk about this increment now if we make 2 instead of 1 and save this program execute it here again I would say pause this video think about it and then let's see how uh, output is, output is changed I'm refreshing this page this time it has started from 2 which is correct the start uh, index is 2 and then after that instead of uh, going to 3 it directly go to 4 4 becomes 6 6 becomes 8 so every time the counter is being in incremented by 2 that's how this increment works okay now for example uh, for this fourth iteration you don't want to uh, print this log you don't want to execute anything in this for loop so what you will do is there is an option provided by for uh, uh, robo framework uh, continue continue for loop if counter is equal to 4 so it will check the condition if counter is equal to 4 then it will just continue it will just skip all the statements which are written over here so to understand this I will just uh, add few more lines here okay and I will add one line above this statement to simplify this we can say before continue here we can say after continue okay let's save this program and run the program and I'm going to refresh this page now okay so the for loop is simple it is going starting for from 2 it's going till uh, 9 that means it will go it will execute 8 and then it will come out and uh, it will increment every time by 2 that is fine now let's go to uh, the first iteration which is counter equal to 2 you can see uh, it has executed all the statements written in for loop so log before continue then continue for for loop if uh, uh, if counter is equal to 4 that is executed then after that log after continue everything is executed okay now let's go to this iteration you can see before continue was executed then it says continue for if counter equal to 4 so in that case it will just skip all the iteration all the instructions or uh, code written after this statement in the for loop and it will directly go to the next iteration the next iteration is again executed fully okay so continue keyword will uh, skip everything after the after that keyword in that particular iteration in next iteration it will again execute everything so this is how continue for loop if this keyword works now I'll write exit exit for loop if let's understand this keyword I'm going to run this 
instead of saying continue we are saying exit the for loop if counter is equal to 4 let's see what happens now the counter is started from 2 and in fourth it has said exit the for loop so all the next condition and all the next uh, code as well as all next iterations are skipped and it has came out of the for loop the for loop is breaking it's like break statement in java if you have worked in java so exit for if condition so uh, let's go to the next topic now hope you understood this if you do not uh, just let me know in comment section and I'll, I'll try to help you out I'll just comment this code write one more for loop for in and here I can pass a list which I need to create above somewhere here I need to I need to declare a variable the list equal to no need to have double quotes here one two, one two see this is my list uh, now what happens is it will uh, just read everything from the list it will store one element at a time in this uh, element uh, variable and it will print this element okay so let's execute this program refresh this log let's see what happens so list has three elements one two and three uh, in first iteration element uh, had value 1 so it has assigned value 1 to element okay so it has printed 1 over here then in next iteration it picked up the next element from the list which is 2 and then it has printed 2 in the logs and then in next iteration it has assigned 3 this is the next value from the list to the element variable and you can see the element is 3 now and here it is printing 3 as a, like uh, 3 values stored in the element all right okay all right friends uh, that's it for this video if this video helped you if you learned something from this subscribe to this channel because more such videos are coming on soon on this channel uh, like this video and let us know your thoughts in comment section because we really like to hear from you and read from you thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye